Last week, we spoke to the CEO of Viaset. That's a communications company with a rapidly growing business connecting airline flights with broadband access, and a stock that I do like for speculation. Now, Viaset had a lot of things to say about the superiority of their satellite-based network versus the competition, particularly GoGo, the leading player in the in-flight Wi-Fi business that controls something like 80% of the market. After that interview, we heard from the folks at GoGo, wanted to tell their own side of the story. And because we always want you to know both sides here on Mad Money, tonight that's exactly what we're going to do. Both Viasat and GoGo are adamant that their vision is the way of the future. In the case of GoGo, this is the company that controls all of the air-to-ground wireless spectrum in the United States. They have a whole air-to-ground network built out, and they also have agreements with a couple of satellite companies for satellite-based broadband. GoGo's got coverage on about 2,000 aircraft, where they sell Wi-Fi access, $9.95 for the whole flight on a laptop, $4.95 for a mobile device, and they're also rolling out an in-flight entertainment service, offering on-demand video that should be fully available on all GoGo flights sometime this year. Biosat's claim to fame is that right now their connections are a lot faster than the competition, but GoGo says that's because at the moment, Biosat's only serving about 40 planes within one satellite. So as they keep adding more planes, their broadband connections could slow. Although, according to Viaset, they're rolling out a new satellite to deal precisely with this problem. I don't know if we can resolve this stock duel tonight, but I do want you to hear GoGo's side of the story, in addition to Viasats like we heard last week. So you can make up your own mind, which is why I'm happy to have Michael Small, the president and CEO of GoGo, here with us tonight to talk about his company's prospects. Mr. Small, welcome to Mad Money. Glad to be here. All right, Michael, I'm, I'm going to give you the floor because I know that Viasat had the floor and I want to be fair. Tell us why you think that your company offers a better, let's say it's a better investment. Yeah, absolutely. As a communication service provider to the global aviation industry, we're always looking for the best solutions for our, our partners. And um, we are introducing what we call GTO, and that's ground to orbit. It combines air to ground and satellite technology. And it is faster, and it has many other benefits compared to any other solution on the marketplace, including um, Viasats. It'll do 70 megabits per second per plane versus 30. It um, has better coverage across the United States. It has more reliability because it's backed up by more satellites. It's better for television. It's more reliable. We love our solution. All right, will it be use useful for, say, Netflix, which is something that I know that Viasat uh, prides himself in? Yeah, we will be fully be able to support streaming. Um, we'll probably have to do it on a similar basis to the way the competition has um, done it, which is you'll pay extra if you want to stream, because streaming does use more bandwidth. And as I heard you mention in the intro, we also have our GoGo Vision um, product, where we preload the movies on the plane. And that's really the, by far the most economical way to watch video is to preload it on the plane. But right, Michael, can you tell me you say you're rolling it out? Someone might say, well, Jim, I mean, rolling out, that could be uh, infinite. Uh, let's get a time frame. Where is it for the planes? You have a lot of companies that are already under contract. Where is this rollout? How far along? So on the GTO, um, the, the high-speed hybrid solution, our first plane will fly at the end of this summer, and then it will roll out very rapidly in 2015. Our GoGo Vision is already available on over 1,000 aircraft, and it'll be 1,700 planes by the end of this year. Are those contracts ironclad? In other words, if, Vi if Viasat came to any of these guys and say, listen, why don't you offer us and GoGo, is that allowed under contract? No, I see no way. Um, you know, our contracts do have that shiny new product clause, but that's only if the competition um, has something that is materially better in the absence and that the airline's not having that would hurt them. But as I just explained, our GTO solution is, is better than the Viasat um, solution for a variety of reasons, and it would be a cheaper upgrade for the airlines to go to our solution rather than switch to someone else. It also would be extraordinarily difficult logistically um, to make the move to another provider. What goes on an aircraft tends to stick on an aircraft. Absolutely. Now, Mike, one of the things that I went uh, at Jim Cramer on Twitter to ask people what's been their experience, I think it, first we have to marvel that we can get Wi-Fi at 30,000 feet. So, I mean, once mm -hmm. you have it, I think it's really pretty, uh, it, it's a luxury. But there's always people who pick at things. And I got a couple comments from some very reliable people, and they're not anonymous, saying that if a lot of people are using GoGo at once on a plane, there is some slowing and some problems. Is that something that can be cured? And is it even true, or is that just grousers? No, that's absolutely true on our more heavily 
use flights, but a lot of people are using the GoGo -Go service. It does slow down. As we speak, we're deploying ATG4, our next generation of air to ground. That significantly relieves the, the um, challenge of too many people using our service. And with GTO, that'll be a thing of the past. There'll be more than enough bandwidth for everybody on the plane. How about the international market? Because I think that's still up for grabs. When you're head to head with other competitors, I want to necessarily single anyone. What percentage of the contracts you're head to head with with others do you think you win? Well, since we've launched international and began our international efforts, which was in the summer of 2012 with the Delta contract, we have um, gained almost 50 percent of all the aircraft that have been awarded um, since then, which is a pretty good track record even though we were a U.S. company just beginning our international expansion. This is a global scale game. It's a communications infrastructure play on a global basis. Scale will matter. Um, we're the leader now, and we're looking to build on that leadership position. Okay, on a new contract, I want to get this straight, that you don't necessarily, you're not able to necessarily stream Netflix again for a larger, for a higher cost, but that will be something. If I'm on a go-go a, a enabled plane, say next year at this time, for a higher price, I can go on and get Netflix and watch an entire movie. I don't need to do the preload. Correct. Um, with our GTO technology, as that's deployed, you will be able to do that on those aircraft. Okay, I, now just like, you know, give me one more minute just to say, look, this is a, because mm -hmm. I felt like I, I, I want everyone to know that when someone says, listen, they didn't think that their company was represented well, I always want them to have a chance. Just say why people should choose GoGo. Why well, should um, we are the communication service provider for global aviation? Um, the connected aircraft is the future. Airlines and the passengers will rely on this technology. We know how to deliver the best service day in, day out, so it works every day for our airline partners and their passengers. All right. I want to thank Michael Sandy. You're the GoGo -Go president and CEO, and thank you for coming on Mad Money, sir. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. All right. So now you've heard one side and you've heard the other. I always want Mad Money to be a forum for, to duke it out, to figure out which you think is better, GoGo uh, -Go or Viasa, that that is up to you. Stay with Kramer.